What's up guys, this is Trying to Try Tube, and I made a video about what sucks about Gen 1 actually, and now it's time to do Gen 2. So I've got some of your guys' help on this. We'll go to Twitter later to see what you guys think. Before I start, if you ask people on the internet, a lot of people will say the worst game is Gen 2, and they even live by it for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. They'll say Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Gold, Silver, and Crystal are the lowest of Pokemon games. So especially later, it's gonna be interesting to see what you guys think and why people think that. But first, I'm gonna mention my ideas on why this game sucks the first thing is the evil team should have led to something the story in pokemon gold and silver is kind of weak the way gen 2 was written it was almost written like a dlc to the original red and blue because the original red and blue build up giovanni is this big threat if you go through self co everyone is piss scared look at team rocket sprites they all got whips these men are some menaces team rocket is actually terrifying if you would have read the dialogue which i didn't really read the dialogue but in Gen 2, it doesn't lead to anything. It's written like Team Rocket is being cleaned up after Giovanni left. The story is almost too realistic. There's nothing left of Team Rocket, so the champion even comes down and helps you clean up Team Rocket. That's logically what should have happened in Red and Blue too. They went so realistic that there's nothing that Team Rocket can do in this game. And while I appreciate so much that for like the only time in any Pokemon game that the champion actually comes down and is helping you clean up the mess, Cynthia kinda does it when she's traveling in the distortion world with you. You could take it as bad writing if it actually cleans up the mess, if Team Rocket can't do anything anymore. This game should not have been just about the remnants of Team Rocket and Johto trying to get Giovanni's attention again. It should have led to something. It should have led to not Giovanni answering their calls, but some threat that's equivalent to Giovanni playing a role in this game. You know, Giovanni does have a brother. It's probably only mentioned in the manga, but even if like Giovanni's younger brother is like, hey, yo, what? I'm a rule Team Rocket and try to leech off Giovanni's success, take control of Team Rocket, and you stop him. And that's the climax of the game. You see how in the Sevi Islands for Fire and Leaf Green, you're dealing with Team Rocket's remnants? That's pretty much what Gold and Stover feels like. It just feels like a DLC. Goodness, especially when Lance comes down and helps you. Imagine if they had some figure that was equivalent to Lance. Someone that could really push back. Again, the realism that Team Rocket sucks now and they are being cleaned up is sick. But story-wise, you can't end it there. To make it satisfying, someone should have been able to push back. Team Rocket is so loyal to Giovanni. They had a lot of fun with the writing. Team Rocket was actually loyal to Giovanni. It seems like when they're calling for him back that they didn't want anyone else they wanted only giovanni so you could have led that into some cool writing where someone else tries to take control of team rocket but the admins just don't like it you know you could be strolling into the hideout and maybe archer is supposed to fight you but he's like you know what bro just go through i don't like him either would have made pretty cool for a sequel because even if they're bad at the end of the day you got to respect team rocket being loyal number two the apricorn system i know you didn't think I'd talk about this. The apricorn system is pretty sick. I go around pushing A on these things, shoots up a little apricorn, and then I take it to the man. But the problem is he makes one ball with it. Unless I'm catching a Pidgey, there is no Pokemon that will go in one ball. No one in their right mind is going to catch Pokemon with the balls made from these apricorns. It doesn't even pile up in their bag. They just have like one, two, one, one, one of these special balls. What Kurt should have done even though it doesn't make sense that you get many Pokeballs from one Apricorn, it should have yielded 10. If Kurt yielded like 10 Pokeballs when I gave him a red Apricorn, I would throw those Pokeballs because I don't feel like it's too hard to get. From the start to the end of the game, there's all these Apricorn trees, but no one has the incentive to properly use it. Now, I tell you what, when I was trying to write down stuff I don't like about the games, I haven't played Gen 2 in like 10 years. Last time I played it was when I bought Heart Gold. But when I was writing stuff I hated about it, I actually started writing stuff I liked. Let me just get some of these off. We'll go through these fast. One, cool hidden lore. I've said this one or two times, but Pokemon in their first two generations had fun with the lore. Especially in the first two gens, they'll hint some stuff, but never tell you. One of the cool things is Silver's identity. Until Heart Gold and Soul Silver, no one knew Silver was Giovanni's son. Maybe in the manga they explored it. In the entirety of Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, you're never told Silver is Giovanni's son. It was all for fans to speculate. Now, I don't know if Pokemon gave enough hints for people to figure out Giovanni had a son or that Silver is talking about a dad he hates. You just gotta kind of study Silver's character that he's mean and wants to prove himself to someone. Another cool thing, the red fight. Remember in the Gen 1 video, I mentioned how there might have been no such thing as a champion and that Red and Blue completely dominated the region and made a joke of the Elite Four? The way you fight Red in this game, 
feels exactly like that's true. He has level 80 Pikachu, while Lance is still using, what, like level 40, 50 Pokemon, and the champion level is still around 50. Red and Blue aren't champion level. They've made a joke of the region. So building off that idea from the previous games, they did red pretty perfectly. Goodness, I really don't have much to say for Gen 2. Crystal brought animated sprites, games in color, being able to revisit the previous region. This is still the Game Boy Color. That's insane. Did you know Pokemon Crystal even has a battle tower? They have flavor all over the game. The ominousness in the Bellsprout Tower, the Burnt Tower lore, with the origin of the legendary beast they introduced two whole natural legends that you speculate could fight mewtwo from the first game tidbits everywhere koga's daughter is the gym leader in his place blue is the eighth gym leader takes the traitor giovanni's place cinnabar island got hit by a volcano blaine's gym is in a nearby cave new evolutions to old pokemon polytoad blissey espion umbreon imagine waiting a few years after red and blue and this game coming out it would just blow your mind new types health items shiny variants introduced day and night friendship pokerus bro it's just a secret equal to red and blue you didn't have to go this hard they really worked on this game it's not red and blue with different smoke and mirrors they read it every pokemon's base stats and introduced the special attack stat they got rid of the item limit did you bro there you can only carry 20 items in red and blue can you imagine this popping up every single time we want to talk to a pokeball could you imagine now thinking about only being able to carry 20 items which are completely unorganized a bike will be in between two potions You'll get a new team and have to toss it out. They changed the XP all to an XP share so they didn't stall your game. Custom music per region and legendaries. Red and Blue sucks in comparison. If you touch this game, you would never play Red and Blue again. Red and Blue is not even in color. This game had full color. Even the stuff we feel like they suck at in modern games, like making bipedal starters, they still did in this game. Crocodile that's standing up and a freaking porcupine that has decided to stand up. But for some reason, it just worked in this game. People didn't complain about it. The Gen 2 stars are universally loved, except by those who don't. I freaking try to write stuff I hate about this game, and my entire paper is filled with what I just said. For me personally, the biggest complaint I can only make were those two. Apricorns and the story not leading to something threatening. Oh, okay, fine. I'll give you one. Celebi. Celebi got the same treatment as me. Who came up with this idea of like movie exclusive event Pokemon? Who asked for this? Make a Zelda game. You know how Zelda games need like four or five items that you collect throughout the game for the final boss? Imagine they made a sixth item exclusive in a movie. What, what's the point? Why would you do that? You introduced Celebi who had the same mystic value as me. Everyone wanted a Celebi. I went through the whole playground rumors again trying to get this man to appear. I talked to Kurt. I pulled him by the collar and slapped him a couple times. He wouldn't give me the GS ball. Every trainer has to go by that Ilex shrine and no Celebi is in there because people talk. People will spread the rumor that Celebi's inside there. You just got to open the door. But I don't got hands in this game. I can only open the door if it lets me. But that's more of a complaint for the Gen 1 video. So because I clearly suck at this, I took to Twitter. What sucks about Gen 2? Let's do it. While it's cool that it has Kanto in it, it relies on Kanto mons way too much. Take Faulkner, for example. He uses zero Johto Pokemon on his team. Let's see, what flying types were there in Gen 2? Noctowl, Ladydin, Crobat, Togetic, Zatu, Jumpluff, Skarmory. He could have had some Pokemon. The level curve is atrocious. This is true. I remember that the champion, by the time you fight them, they have like level 40, 50 Pokemon. The gym leaders have dog crap teams and barely any of them have a Gen 2 Mon as their ace. Let's go through the gym leaders teams. Pokemon eternally keeps giving trainers bad teams. I'm about to go through them. If they're ass, you're gonna piss me off. In this game, you should have started to fill their teams with like five, six Pokemon. Let's go through them. Faulkner uses a Pidgey and Pidgeotto. Okay, Faulkner, you should have had a Gen 2 Pokemon. I suppose what they were going for is they didn't want it to seem like its own game. They wanted to build it into the world of Gen 1. But only flies once, Game Freak. If Bugsy don't got a Gen 2 Pokemon, what the frick? Bugsy? Bugsy got a Metapod Kakuna in sight there? I remember Bugsy never being hard. You just train your fire type with them. Oh, that's a game freak. Whitney has a Clefairy and Miltank. Okay, Miltank's a Gen 2 Pokemon. As hard as these gym leaders were, even with just two Pokemon, yo, if you gave them like three or four Pokemon and really made it so trainers would be stuck on Whitney for a long time before getting past her, I think it would have hit well. Oh my goodness. Morty just has the Gengar line. My like, Morty, don't show me Gengar like I can get it. They did have some pretty unique gyms. Chuck uses Primeape and Polyrath. Up until Chuck, I could feel them trying to blend the Kanto Pokemon in. Now it's getting serious. Y'all not using Johto Pokemon. Jasmine. 
okay, she brings out the Steelix. Memorable. But what's the point of this Pokemon? Why do they have level 30 Magnemites? Make a Magnetons! Seventh Gym Leader Price. Oh my goodness, he pulls up with a seal? Seal, Dugong, Pyloswine. Okay, there's the Gen 2 Pokemon. Okay, Claire, I already know you got that Kingdra. What the f- Wait, this is her team? <laughs> She's a wannabe Lance. You know what? I give you the you're right. There are many unused Gen 2 Pokemon across these gym battles. Even Lance was using the pseudo legendary for that generation. No one is using Tyranitar. No one's using Dunsparce. No one's digging into these Gen 2 special Pokemon that don't exist in Kanto. You're right. Gen 2 Pokedex was by far the weakest in terms of strength. Oh man, are you right? Ladian sucks. I don't have the energy. You know me. I can't get Celebi or nothing, so I try to train a Ladybun to Ladian. Oh, did this man suck. 390 BST. 35 freaking attack! What could I do with this thing? Why does he have special defense? What am I gonna do with just special defense? Actually atrocious. It's barely memorable. Whitney's mill tank should not be something you fight by Gen 3. It feels like such a spike in regards to what you fight up to now. So they're saying Milty's Whitney is way too hard to be the third gym. This is good. This difficulty that Whitney's mill tank had should have been for every single gym leader. Maybe except Faulkner. Just because if a kid's playing the game and they can't even beat the first gym leader, they might drop the game. But Bugsy should have whooped your ass. Bugsy should have had a Ladian, and Ladian should have had insane stats. Every gym, by the time you beat it, should result in a massive exhale. Like, holy crap, I can see what's on the other side of the game now. Don't get any cool Jotumons before beating the game. Man, this is true. Let's look up what people's teams in Gen 2 were. Here we got Vusch Vusch. Poor guy, yo. Lance Lance got the title because both the people who beat him left. So look, Lance's first Pokemon is a level 44 Gyarados. Okay. My guy's using Wigglytuff for specs. Okay, his team was Wigglytuff, Heracross, Fraligator, Umbreon, Sandslash, and Zatu. So half his team was Gen 1. It should have been more Gen 2s. Let's see one more team. This one is Red Philippe. So Philippe has Magneton, Suicune, Typhlosion, Espeon, Golem, and Dragonite. Seems like the general people who play this game and don't go out of their way to collect unique Pokemon are just gonna have the starter and an Evolution on their team. Goodness, even Dratini you can get before the champion battle in the Blackthorn Cave. Tyranitar you can only get in the post game. That's messed up. It's not a bad direction inherently, because it's always fun to have post game content. But when so many of them are locked behind the post game that you beat the game using mostly Kanto Pokemon, seems like a problem. Johto Mons don't stand out. Oh, I'd argue they do. Lackluster ending to the return of Team Rocket. This is the biggest thing. People here aren't mentioning big problems with Gen 2, just minor things. The Gen 2 gym leaders are really bad. Chuck only has two Pokemon. Yeah, I think after Whitney, the gym leaders get easy again until Claire. Only Whitney and Claire are like the real hard ones. Something I haven't seen mentioned, but the AI has a 25% chance of just doing nothing and had a move that was actually detrimental to them. Example, Jasmine Steelix had Sunny Day. Goodness, they were even holding our hand back then. Yeah, that crap is stupid. A good chunk of Pokemon are actually bad, like Murkrow and Sneasel. I don't know why Game Freak introduces Pokemon that are factually, objectively bad. Not Pokemon some people like and some people don't. Just Pokemon that you should not put on your team. Even the dude who fought the Elite Four with the Zatu, you know Zatu sucks, right? Like you would have dominated if you had a Pidgeot on your team. Look at these stats, it's all flat. Miltank is stronger than you. Wow. I mean, you guys really aren't beating this game up like I was hoping you would. The biggest things mentioned from you guys are the level curve, the anticlimactic ending to Team Rocket, and the lack of Gen 2 months being used by trainers slash them being good. You can look at the tweet if you want to read some more replies, but it seems that's what really makes Gen 2 suck. It's funny because Gen 2 Pokemon are so unused in the games that most people don't even know like Skarmory, Togetic, and Smeargle are Gen 2 two Pokemon, not Gen 3. Because you end up going through all of Gold and Silver, never meeting them. The first time I met them was in Gen 3, where Steven used a Skarmory. I thought it was a Gen 3 Pokemon. You find that Pokemon Emerald Cave with Smeargle, I thought, I thought that's when he was introduced. And because Game Freak did a much better job with Gen 1 story, I think we can properly, without feeling bad, call them incompetent on the story for Gold and Silver. If you're gonna have us cleaning Team Rocket and make it so easy to do that even Lance jumps down to help you, that's the ultimate setup to introduce someone 
who's gonna make Lance pee his pants. Imagine in the electrode place with Lance, this mysterious rocket dude pops up and Lance is like, I'll handle him, you deal with the electrode. And after you finish finding the electrode, it shows Lance lost. Team Rocket Dude goes away. Got what he came for. Now we got something going for the story. Now you didn't just bring Lance to realistically clean up Team Rocket. You brought him in to show how terrifying it's about to be. Alright, I'm gonna call it quits here. In fact, no, nah, hold up. Giovanni, this these men have been calling out for you for the whole game. And the direction Game Freak took with Giovanni's response is nothing. Giovanni says nothing back. Not even a hint. Like... After Team Rocket's disbanded, some Rocket Grunt looks at the voicemail and says, Oh shoot, Giovanni left a voicemail. Nothing from Giovanni. It's so anticlimactic. Gen 2 is really fun to play through, but not for the story. I don't know what's fun about it. I guess it's just what typical Pokemon game stuff. If y'all have something that properly describes why Gen 2 sucks, let me know in the comments. Go on and shank that like button, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Bro